Hey everyone, uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, this is our annual business meeting for the RFS section. Uh, my name is Shantin Radpande. Um, we'll try to keep this brief, but I do think that um, having an annual business meeting is, is a nice way to introduce um, the uh, RFS members to what the um, RFS is all about, what we're doing, uh, what we did in the last year and what we're gonna be doing in the, in the following year. So uh, we hope you uh, get something out of this. And um, as always, if, if if you have any questions, reach out to us. My name is Shantan Rod Pandey. I'm the incoming Governing Council Chair. Um, I'm a current PGY3, and um, I've been involved in the RFS for a couple of years now, and um, I've seen it evolve uh, quite a lot in the last four or five years. Um, I think we're, we're quickly becoming an integral part of the IR community, um, and we're certainly an integral part of the IR trainee com uh, community. So. Um, I think that that's something very important. And, and as we get more importance, um, as we take on more um, of a lead, leadership role in the community, I think um, our projects are becoming more and more valuable as well as uh, impactful. And I hope you learn more about that today. Um, our outgoing chair, David Maldow, uh, did a great job last year. And um, I think he, um, he set the stage for me, certainly. So I have um, um, a lot to thank him for. So this is the RFS mission. Uh, it's a wordy slide. Um, for the most part, um, I, I'm gonna skip right through it and get to a summarized version of it. Um, but the key here is that we're here for the trainees. The, the whole point of the RFS is uh, for us to be able to provide for the trainees. And uh, the way I see it, RFS has two major roles. The first is we have to have a pulse on um, all the trainees. So now we have four different groups. At this stage, we have four different groups that we gotta worry about. We got med students, we got IR DR residents, we got DR residents that are doing ESIR and DR residents that are doing non-ESIR. Each one of these groups has their own individual uh, set of fears, anxieties, and problems that they're encountering. And um, it's our job as RFS to be able to uh, kind of plug in with them, uh, identify what the issues are, and then work to solve them. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a pretty, um, I think this is one of the more important roles that we have. Um, and I, I think especially with the new changes that are occurring in IR training, um, lack of a better, uh, easiest way for me to put it is someone's got to look out for us. And that's RFS's job. So the way we do that is by plugging ourselves into the, the social network. Um, I think one of the understated um, accomplishments of RFS is that we have built this very robust social network, which uh, we can tap into and um, sort of tease out what the issues are at the trainee level. Um, and we do that by going to a lot of conferences. Most of the chairs attend uh, dozens of conferences um, amongst all of us. We, we go to a lot of them. So um, it's our job to kind of connect with you guys and make sure you um, make sure your issues come to the forefront. The second role of the RFS, the way I see it, is to uh, look at this new training pathway that we have and identify what issues, what holes there are, and then fun and act to fill those holes. And right now, um, one, of the, one of the issues that we're running into is that um, a lot of us are very aggressive. Uh, we're coming into this training pathway very, very aggressive, and we want more. We want more clinic time. We want more clinical experience. We want more um, IR earlier. And I think the, the challenge for us is to make sure that that's, that's, that actually happens. Um, so I've listed a few things here, which I, I just kind of mentioned. But... I think that the important takeaway from, from this particular point is that um, we are a different breed. And for the first time now, we have a, um, a platform for change. Uh, unlike in the prior years, uh, we have a platform, which is the IRS residency for change. So it's very much up to us to um, identify what the needs are, what, what do these new uh, aggressive trainees want, and then act to uh, provide those to the trainees. This is the RFS structure. Um, at the top is our president, Dr. Feindeis. Uh, Dr. Parag Patel is our uh, a GME counselor who's, who's been our mentor for a while. And then Dr. Kumar and Dr. Vedek and Cherry, who I'm sure you guys will meet uh, and or at least hear, out, hear about, are uh, the SARC and RFS section uh, mentors and advisors, uh, respectively. So in the last few years, RFS has grown in the number of committees we have. We added two new committees. Um, as well as uh, one new service line, which is the ICU service 
pipeline. And um, it's a complex system. There's a lot of moving parts. Um, but we all have a sim all every single committee, every single service line has a common goal. Um, and that's to take care of the trainees. Uh, we got to make sure, as I mentioned earlier, we got to make sure we identify the issues at the trainee level and then, and then act to fix those. And obviously, as always, um, and you'll hear more about this from the, uh, the medical student challenge chairs uh, Hanson and Lauren uh, at their business meeting. Um, our goal is to recruit the brightest and uh, best medical students and residents to IR. The governing council chairs, um, every chair will get uh, start their official term in March of 20, uh, March of the year, so at the annual meeting, and then their official term will go to the next annual meeting. So for this particular group, uh, we'll start our official terms in March 2019 and go to March 2020. Uh, this is the 2018, the outgoing chairs uh, from last year. And uh, if you'll notice, um, there's uh, this is the 2019. Uh, and if you'll notice, there's been a lot of additional uh, committee members added. And I think that's for the that's that's very appropriate. We've had a lot of um, we've a lot of growth in the last year or so. And I think um, this is a necessary part of the evolution of IR is to add a few more individuals um, to be able to uh, account for the increased growth that we have seen. So in 2018, we had a, a couple of big wins, uh, which I wanted to mention. Um, we are uh, we're continuing to work with the international societies, uh, including the Indian Society of Vascular Interventional Radiology, CIRSI, um, CIRA, and as well as um, we have a new uh, very recently, we we uh, are working with the BSIR, which is the British Society as well. So we're going to continue working with them, and I think the International uh, Outreach Committee has some uh, very exciting goals that they want to uh, accomplish this coming year. Uh, the Medical Student Council has continued to excel. Uh, we have now broken the, the 100 uh, interest group mark uh, nationwide, and the number of symposia that we're holding continue to grow uh, every year and has that, that's been the trend for the last three, four years. As far as uh, the, the filling the clinical needs that I've mentioned before, um, the ITROP uh, that was completed last year uh, was highly successful. I, I'm, I think we're doing a second version this year as well, which I'm sure will be just as successful. We had almost 300 registrants for that and uh, the, the reviews were overwhelmingly positive. Um, Tad McGuire, uh, who you'll hear from soon, um, has been working on the critical care curriculum with uh, with a few of the clinical ed education members. Um, you'll hear a bit more about this as well, but we've rolled it out at eight programs and um, the response has been very good. And um, hopefully we'll be incorporating this um, in a more robust way at, uh, with the executive count, the SIR executive council. Uh, they've shown a, a significant amount of interest in this as well. So um, looking forward to seeing what happens with that. As far as social media, uh, we've always had a pretty good social media presence, but we're also uh, always looking for new platforms. Uh, a very new platform that was introduced to us was JiggleMed, which is an endovascular uh, only uh, platform, social media platform, which um, if you haven't taken a look at, I, I would highly, highly encourage it. Uh, it's a very cool new uh, platform for IR, interventional cardiology, vascular surgeons, and so on. And finally, uh, advocacy. We, we've had a We've had a very successful year as far as raising money goes. And I think a lot of that has to do with um, with the residents that were involved. Um, there's one thing very good we're, we're very good at as residents. It's um, pestering attendings to give something, in this case, money. So it was for a good cause. Um, and I think we did a very good job at that. And uh, we had the highest amount raised in, uh, in three years. Um, and you'll hear more about that from uh, um, Alex uh, later down in the presentation. So with that, we're going to start our, um, our uh, each chair will introduce themselves, give a brief description of their, of their committee, and talk about the upcoming uh, the 2018 uh, accomplishments and the 2019 goals. Great. Thank you, Shantanu. Um, my name is Lauren Park. I'm a fourth year medical student at Brown University. I'm the, I'm the outgoing chair of the Medical Student Council. Uh, Hanson Lee, who's a third year at Medical College of Georgia, will be the incoming chair. Um, 
I would like to briefly talk about our accomplishments from this year. Uh, but before I do that, I would like to thank David Maldo and all the outgoing RFS chairs for working really closely with the MSC as collaborators and mentors. W really, between David and I, we work to work together as, um, as a team between RFS and MSC, regardless of our levels of training this year. And I think um, we worked really well together and I hope that we'll continue to collaborate between RFS and MSC. Um, and I'm sure uh, with leadership under Shantanu and Hansen that RFS and MSC will work even um, at greater capacity next year. Um, Shantanu, would you mind turning to the next slide? Awesome. Um, so just purely speaking about numbers, uh, this year, um, as of the first week of March, we currently have 2,344 medical student members in SIR. That's about 7.4% growth in comparison to around this time last year. We have 134 IRIGs across the country, and these are including um, just the pure IR interest groups as well as the radiology and IR combined interest groups, and that's about 40% growth since last year. We've had 32 symposia and few of coming as well um, throughout this year and that's about eight more symposia than last year uh, we're still pending on the total count for medical student attendance but last year we had a record number of 150, 415 and this year we're expecting around the same or even greater number of student attendance for at, at SIR annual meeting in Austin um, and same as last year we had 85 very qualified um, medical student scholars um, attending the annual meeting with scholarship provided by SIR this year. And that was an increase from 50 the previous year. So um, we're keeping at 85 and it, it was a pretty competitive year for this scholarship as well. We encourage all the students watching this to definitely apply around October for next year as well. Um, that's about it in terms of our numbers. Um, Shantan, if you could get to our next page. I just want to um, emphasize that MSC it has a lot of committees very parallel to RFS. Um, our committees include Biodesign and Innovation, IR Interest Group, Education Committee, Research Committee, um, PR and Communications, Patient and Family Care Committee, web and technology committee and this year we added two more committees to the student council including medical student reserves as well as diversity and inclusion um, we will have our own student council business meeting on tuesday march 19th um, from 8 p.m to 10 p.m uh, we will discuss our accomplishments more in detail uh, by every committee in the student council and also discuss our application process for uh, students interested in joining the student council at that time. So if you're a student listening in, please join in us, uh, join, join in for our um, annual meeting. And just want to clarify uh, something that we decided last year was that if you're a fourth year medical student interested in joining um, either RFS or MSC, uh, we encourage you to apply for RFS. Uh, if you are third year medical student and under, uh, we encourage you to apply for the student council. And we are going to strictly delineate that, um, or we have been doing that since last year. Um, so that's about it from the student council. Thank you so much. All right. Hi, all. My name is uh, Tad McGuire. I'm the incoming uh, chair for the Clinical Education Committee. Um, I want to thank Shant New. It's been a pretty smooth uh, passing of the baton since I kind of came on board a little, uh, little more than a year ago, like right as some of our projects um, kind of were taking shape. Um, so, uh, Shant New, next slide, please. Um, so, our goals, uh, our overarching goals, um, it's really just about uh, you know, to reinforce what Shantanu said, it's kind of all about the trainees, um, where we're uh, we we kind of come from the the side of just enhancing clinical knowledge and not just uh, not just teaching pertinent information, but kind of 
keeping a lot of the skills that you had um, as a medical student when you were kind of in your um, more clinical years, obviously radiology, um, everyone kind of says it's it's a lot like drinking from a fire hose when you start on your diagnostic radiology time. Um, it's a lot, it's a totally different way of learning and a lot of different priorities. Um, and, uh, you know, like anything else, if you don't use it, you lose it. So um, new information, integration and um, reinforcement um, of everything you're going to use when you're when you're done with with that kind of equally difficult but different time. Um, so um, move on to the next slide. <clears throat> so we have kind of we have a lot of smaller projects, but these are kind of our big ones for the year on um, the critical care curriculum, as Shantanu alluded to. Um, it's a it's fairly similar to ITROP. Um, but it'll be a, it's more of a learn at your own pace. Um, you, you'll be able to um, kind of take these high yield um, modules um, and prepare f um, over the course of several months. You can prepare for a critical care rotation that is going to be a requirement during IRDR or ESIR. Um, most of the time we're finding um, that that's going to be in your last year. So it's sort of designed to, to sort of uh, be a low impact way of getting ready for that over the course of your third year, early fourth year leading into it. Um, the clinical education poster series number two there um, is um, just a, it's kind of an effort uh, to kind of collaborate across all of our, all of our various service lines and um, uh, keep sending members out to uh, these different conferences, keeping uh, the RFS kind of in the mix um, while being able to also um, encourage our trainees to, learn something new or um, just or teach something they feel very familiar with. Um, there's really any number of ways to go with that. Um, and then the IR outpatient clinic guide, um, right now it's um, shaping up to be, um, it's pretty robust. It's it's essentially gonna be a pocket, uh, a reference um, that's gonna come in an app form um, to use on in any clinical uh, scenario. Um, it'll be a nice, it'll be a really nice reference. Um, and that's moving right along. I think they've got about 70, they've got all of it covered from a trainee side, and we've got about 75% of it um, being audited by um, faculty now. So stay tuned. Um, next slide, please. Um, this is just a little data on the critical care curriculum, obviously. Um, so we've rolled it out at a small, um, a handful of uh, programs um, overall, like it wasn't a very large sample size, but those we've pulled about it, the, the data we, that we did get was um, at least suggestive that it was working and people were finding it helpful. Um, obviously, there's a, there's a lot of anxiety around, um, you know, going into a reading room for three years and then coming back out to try and take care of a patient on ECMO and a ventilator. Um, so people agree that this is a, a pretty easy um, path of least resistance to kind of keep your toe in the waters clinically. Um, they they don't feel like you know you get necessarily enough of that in your in your training um, while you're on a diagnostic side, which makes sense. Um, and uh, overall, the resources that we found so far, people have found um, they found them manageable, they found them helpful. Um, but obviously, it's striking a balance between people's busy busy lives, and uh, that's oh, I guess my time's up. <laughs> um, and uh, and um, making it worthwhile while also being able to um, keep along with their diagnostic training. Um, so yeah, I hope as we roll out more um, modules, more people will sign up and kind of see what they think. Um, and we're going to uh, be working, like the next phase of the project is gonna um, come into play um, later this year. So thanks. All right. I'm Joe Marion, uh, incoming chair for the membership council. I'd like to give a shout out to Erica for all the work that she did over the past year. An outstanding job with uh, uh, the council and uh, transitioning me into the role. Go next slide, please. I uh, just want to highlight uh, kind of the unique uh, format that the membership council has. Uh, we have six service lines. Uh, they're listed here, and each one has its own service line share. Uh, as somebody, whenever anybody, sign, whenever anybody has signed up for uh, the RFS, they get assigned to one of the service lines. So really anybody that comes into RFS ends up in some way in the membership council. And so this uh, positions the membership council very uniquely within the RFS, I think. Uh, 
Uh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, just highlighting uh, some of the projects that uh, we were able to accomplish last year. Uh, worked on the uh, resident clinic forum. Uh, worked on that through uh, Connect, uh, SIR Connect. Uh, found out uh, kind of what worked, what didn't, things that we can tweak this year. Uh, and so that's something that's going to, we're going to modify in some ways this year and uh, keep an eye out for uh, kind of a, a rebranding of that of, of sorts later on. I, I think last year, uh, overall, our webinars, we had a considerable number of them coming out of the service lines. I uh, definitely exceeded the, uh, the number of uh, the number that we had anticipated initially. Uh, that's something that we're also going to continue this year to uh, continue to have those webinars uh, that are content specific, clinically specific, uh, and something that can be posted on the RFS um, YouTube site uh, to be used for used by trainees at any time. Uh, working on the survival guides and journal primers has been kind of an ongoing project for the membership council for some time now. Uh, and one that uh, over the last year saw a lot of success in getting uh, both survival guides and journal primers uh, published online. Uh, and that is something, again, that uh, we're going to continue to make sure that we follow up on uh, service gui or survival guides and uh, journal primers that are out there that are being edited uh, and get them available to trainees, kind of the most important part. Uh, and then continue on uh, expanding the list that is available uh, as new studies and uh, new techniques or anything like that come out. Uh, and finally, uh, working on a patient-centered video project, uh, kind of something that's more geared towards uh, kind of how the, the patient experience in IR uh, and how uh, we as trainees and as eventually attendings um, play such a huge role in that uh, for the patients. Uh, that is something that, again, has, has been an ongoing project. Uh, we have several of the service lines that uh, have uh, videos that they have uh, taken from, uh, gotten from patients and their experiences, uh, and working on curating those into uh, something that's usable. All right, next, pro next slide, please. Uh, and just highlighting things, uh, goals for this coming year. I uh, want to utilize the, uh, the unique position that the membership council is in, in that uh, we have such a broad base, uh, really all the members in some aspect. Um, and I think that it's been a part of the discussion within RFS for several years. Uh, but I think it, it's time to really bring it to the forefront as to what it means to be a member. Uh, and that's something over the next year I want to uh, work on a definition for and see what we can do working with uh, recruitment uh, as well as the rest of the governing council to come up with what that could mean uh, for trainees at this pivotal moment in, our, or in uh, IR training as we're transitioning into uh, residency programs. Uh, I think it's important that we capitalize on this at this time. Uh, because it's these members that are joining RFS now that will continue on to SIR and be a huge uh, force uh, in advocating for our profession down the road. Uh, next thing, we have a lot of resources out there uh, from our journal primers, survival guides, uh, a number of things from the um, Medical Student Council, uh, that we can kind of bring together into a usable form. Uh, and kind of one of the um, first things that we need to do is kind of make a library of that. Uh, and that's a project that uh, is underway now. Uh, I kind of jumping around here, I guess. Uh, third thing and most uh, one of the more important things that we're working on this year is uh, collaborating. Uh, one of the main goals for membership council has been to uh, make uh, tools and resources for trainees as they go through their training. Uh, but that role has really expanded to multiple committees throughout RFS. Uh, and Membership Council, again, is kind of positioned uniquely to kind of be that uh, center point for organizing those things. Uh, and so really just working with uh, all of our counterparts on the rest of RFS to 
to reduce redundancy and keep things organized. Uh, and then the rest is kind of mentioned in the prior slide. So uh, thank you. Everyone, my name is Eric Keller. I'm a first year resident at Santa Clara Valley Medical Center. I'm going to be starting my IRDR residency at Stanford this July. And I've been in the position of the webmaster kind of overseeing the RFS website. So I, I work very closely with all the committees in one way or another. Next slide. So one of the big things that happened this year is we completely reorganized and redid the entire website. So in May of 2018, we redesigned the whole thing and we really saw a market improvement in traffic retention, page views, and a lot of the feedback that we got was very positive with that. The people felt like they could find what they were looking for a lot better than they could with the previous site. Next slide. And so at this point, this is the trend over that time with the new site to today. Uh, we get a little over 2,000 users each month at this point is our average, with the majority of those being new users. We have about 84% new, uh, <clears throat> new users and 8 or 16% returning users at this point. And usually people will visit a couple pages on average. Usually they seem to know what they're looking for because of how they got there. A lot of, which I'll show you soon, comes from Google searches. Next page. And one interesting thing we saw is, of course, most of our traffic comes from the United States, but actually we have uh, pings and users all over the world now. And, you know, as you'll hear with our international outreach committee, you know, that's a new section of our website, which has gotten a lot of good traffic recently, which I think has been encouraging. And then the last slide. And so in terms of the resources out there to make you aware of some of our most popular ones, Definitely we get a ton of traffic to our Med Student Symposia page that lists those events upcoming, how to join RFS, common IR procedures, application advice, really big during applications season, of course. And then some top resources, definitely the away rotation spreadsheet was a big one, but also things like Sound of IR that the Medical Student Council put together, uh, the IR schedule comparison, upcoming conferences, things like that. And then as I was mentioning, one thing for, I think, us to collaborate with communications that you're hearing from next is that, you know, we keep expanding our social media outlets, but we really need to make sure that we're collaborating well and with the website, both the website sending you to social media and social media sending you to website because the most of our traffic actually comes from uh, Google searches for specific pages. And that's usually how most people get to us rather than social media at this time. As always, my my emails down here. If you have any direct questions, just shoot me an email regarding the site, and I'm always happy to help out or direct you to resources. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jason Fisher. I'm currently a surgery intern at Mount Sinai Hospital and an incoming radiology resident at Hartford Hospital this summer. I'm um, pretty excited to be taken over for the communications team this year from Justin and David. Uh, we also have David Bamshad, who I'm going to try and unmute. He's on his phone at work. David, you there? Yeah. Hi, everybody. You hear me? Do you hear me? Yep, you're good. All right. So, uh, yeah, my name is David Bamshad. I'm currently an MS4 at New York Medical College. Uh, finding out where I matched this Friday, so that's exciting. Um, I'm very excited to lead the communications committee along with Jason. Justin and Charles did a great job transitioning us, and we're really looking forward to accomplishing lots of great things this year. Um, yeah, go ahead, Jason. You're going to talk about uh, some more goals. Okay, so up first is our role on the editorial committee of the IR quarterly team. Uh, the communications committee contributes not only to review, but also coordinates a column in each issue which focuses on our, our world of trainees. Uh, the immediate upcoming topics are, are listed here and have been sorted out by uh, our predecessors last year. Uh, this spring, we have an interview with the IR Pocketbook authors spearheaded by our, our own incoming chair this year. Um, and moving on into the summer, we're gonna focus on intern year experiences, kind of contrasting some of the benefits of both medicine uh, and transitional and surgical curriculums. Uh, next slide. 
So Moving Around Communications Committee coordinates a lot of the RFS online lecture series, uh, specifically the webinar and journal club presentations from our, our service lines that were mentioned make up the large majority of these. Um, as regards to the webinars themselves, we field the questions regarding procedure and scheduling uh, leading up to the presentation day. And we take our, our panelists through registering as well as advertising for their lecture. Um, this also includes being present day of in order to launch the platform, host the presentation, um, and manage the recordings, as well as help field audience questions. Uh, a big point of improvement this, this year is going to be facilitating more of an interactive presentation for our service lines. Um, we found a lot of dead space in, in terms of audience uh, question generation and uh, getting these to the, to the presenter, presenters if they're you know, entered in the chat boxes and things like that. So we wanna not only be present, but have our personnel kind of actively generating questions as we go through in order to create a reserve of some jumping off points to promote more um, interactive conversation. Um, we also hope to have our service lines increase the number of uh, journal club based presentations they put on relative to the webinars this year, uh, as those have been some really great discussions on current and landmark studies uh, and provide a good um, interactive for trainees looking to get into more um, literature-based review. So the communications committee oversees uh, the entirety of our active social media accounts. Um, this definitely would not be possible without our, our litany of liaison members who are running all these day-to-day -day posts. Um, and have been doing a great job at it year over year. Uh, specifically, we're gonna touch mostly on Twitter, which is our far and away our most active account among these. Uh, we're gonna show a little bit of a detailed look at our progress there. Um, but we use Twitter mostly to prevent some of the things listed here, not only case side uh, as well as retweeting the platform from the IR community, um, but also advertising for a lot of our events which has been a big outreach platform for the webinars, for the journal clubs, uh, as well as in-person events. Um, for figure one, uh, RFS was actually the first medical society. We got our little shout out here, which has been passed along these slides from year to year at the annual business meeting. Um, but it's, a, it's made a lot of progress over the last one to two years, and I think has been our best uh, outlet for more case-based discussion. Um, a lot of these have been harnessed from our membership and our liaisons have posted uh, imaging questions, um, as well as very clinically detailed questions, including um, indications, complications of interventions, um, and questions that follow the typical next best step or workup type format that you see in a lot of traditional STEMs. Uh, Facebook for us is uh, definitely a point of improvement. Uh, we have a lot of room to grow over the course of this year. Uh, some of our numbers have shown regular growth in terms of the Facebook account exposure, um, but it tends to be less interactive as a platform than most of our other accounts. Uh, but I think we could do a lot of improvement in terms of our advertising this year for the RFS via Facebook. Uh, Instagram has done a great year in terms of promoting a lot of the institutional and faculty spotlights. Um, it's just been a really unique role kind of for our Instagram account in exposing trainees to some of the people out there their exposure to IR, how they got into the field, um, as well as a lot of things they're working on now. We're currently working on establishing a, a presence for the JiggleMed platform, which has been uh, the only true endovascular focused social media community. And it's very early days, but we'll be recruiting membership to be involved in both liaison and um, some industry facing projects as well. Next slide. Uh, so a quick spotlight here on our Twitter presence. Um, the numbers you see have well, disappeared on me already, but uh, we did some strong growth over the 2017 to 2018 year. But this year from 2018 going into early 2019, we've really dwarfed that. Um, you can see here these 12 month growth numbers are actually the differential growth um, for year over year. So this year we had 4,700 and some odd tweets compared to last year. Uh, as well as a good chunk more people that the RFS is now following and uh, that follow us. A uh, large portion of our increased exposure through Twitter really relies heavily on the Twitter community uh, in IR, which is incredibly strong for those of you that are involved, and I'm sure you've seen. 
both our faculty in the RFS and the community at large have done a fantastic job of keeping the RFS in the fold in terms of tagging them on their posts, uh, providing some pretty great trainee level descriptions um, and retweeting our posts as well. Uh, one element of our count that should bloom this year um, is the journal primer series, which was mentioned just a moment ago. I want to start generating um, more and more Twitter posts with our liaisons, getting some of these uh, provide some quite, uh, quick read summaries uh, of both influential, influential historical literature and uh, new and upcoming stuff. Uh, next slide. Can we get the next slide? So the RFS manages a YouTube channel, uh, which is titled IR Education. I think we went one slide too far though. Um, perfect. So as you can see here on the right, uh, our account continues its growth this year. We had a good number of views. This is just over the course of the past month um, and a good chunk of new subscriptions as well. Uh, however, a concern that uh, David and I have been discussing this year is how we're presenting this channel to the community. Uh, we have an increased number of viewers, but we haven't done enough to modernize our, our YouTube platform. Right now, it's mostly being used as more of a repository than an active uh, social media platform, which it could be. Uh, this year, I want to kind of transform that into more of an educational-based outlet. Um, and that, that's in keeping much more with uh, the rest of our social media platforms as well. Uh, the structure on our YouTube channel, when you land on the main page, you're faced with a uh, list of our videos kind of organized by date. Uh, we're now up to over 150 videos that you're left to sort through, um, whether it be by name or topic that you've searched. Uh, reorient this, we've begun an outline of a new playlist-based format. Uh, our YouTube channel does currently have some playlists on it that look like they were created fairly historically in the early days. They don't really include most of our videos and they certainly don't expand the breadth of what IR is today. Um, so in addition to that, we will pretty soon after the meeting be starting uh, recruitment for members to help uh, sort and place these videos in a new playlist-based structure um, before moving on to kind of a second phase, which is going to be centered around the way users can interact with the platform. We want to increase our traffic to the playlist uh, format rather than just the home page. And I think we've outlined two goals so far in, in doing that. One will be... Uh, hopefully an adjustment uh, working with Eric in the, on the RFS uh, SEER web uh, page. We currently have a link to our webinars. It's kind of tucked away under uh, clinical resources, actually. I should if we can go to the next, uh, <clears throat> next slide. I think I have a picture of it there. Um, and so you have to kind of do some digging to get there. And when you do, it lands you on that page I mentioned with the, the totality of our, our videos that you have to kind of sort through. Um, so we're kind of putting a proposal together now for Eric on uh, how we can maybe get our own page, if not reorient this page to kind of direct to um, the playlist category and hopefully list some of our current videos as they come about um, from our service lines, as well as maybe some headers on the overall um, different playlists we're generating. And so in this way, uh, you know, our members will kind of come across it and slowly, um, search queries or otherwise just Uh, next slide. Is this the right one? Can we go to the next slide? So our last major topic here um, addresses the RFS uh, commitment through the communications team of working with the JVIR media team. Uh, we want to continue to provide some meaningful journal summaries to the blog. And in, in, along those lines, we've been in contact with Dr. Wilkins on how to best continue our role here, uh, especially in line with some of the changes he's making to the blog this year. That really should uh, allow for a more streamlined authorship process for those in, involved in the RFS. Um, right now, it's been a bit stagnant, but as we get past the meeting and in the coming months, we're going to start to expand our, our contributions again. Uh, on our end, we hope to increase our production for some of these summaries and also keep a close eye on increasing the quality of the content we put out for it. Uh, a major way we can do this and kind of alleviating some of the 
the editing work Dr. Wilkins has to do for these is kind of expanding our network of on review um, of their authorships prior to kind of submitting it, whether authors will be responsible for getting their own faculty or using a network of, uh, of existing review faculty through SIR. Um, we can really kind of streamline what we're providing to the blog and, and in that way kind of increase our publish, publishership there. Um, so look out for some upcoming SIR Connect posts regarding involvement once we get a little bit past the meeting. Our last slide is just a, a list of summary topics to cover because I know we went through a lot for the communications team. Some of our major goals um, are going to be continuing our webinar responsibilities while kind of spearheading recruitment of members willing to give more presentations through their service line and uh, corral some faculty members to, to contribute to that conversation with them. We also want to increase our online clinical education presence through several new outlets as well as to continue to grow the platforms we've been working with successfully so far. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Andrew Moore. I'm one of the incoming chairs for the International Outreach Committee, along with uh, Raja Chan. He was unable to make it tonight. He's on his way to an interview. Um, our outgoing chair is uh, Marco Eritreo. As Shantanu mentioned, uh, it's kind of a newer committee within the RFS. So a lot of the stuff we plan for this year is really due to the foundation that um, Marco and Raja uh, laid down for us last year. Next slide. So just to kind of briefly go over what they were able to accomplish last year for our International Outreach Committee, um, they developed a pretty cool uh, guide for international medical graduates uh, into matching into IR. Uh, as a part of that, as just sort of resources for education, we had interviews with um, uh, IRs um, in practice and in training um, who were foreign medical graduates and kind of got their experience, um, as well as interviews with um, IRs practicing um, globally, uh, like in Italy, we kind of interviewed them to just get a sense for what um, training models are like there and, and, and broaden our awareness of IR training and what it can be. Um, as part of this uh, outreach effort, uh, we had a delegation go to CRC, which is the um, European IR organization, and present a presentation on uh, RFS specifically and kind of how we integrate um, residents, fellows, and students into our um, in national society. Um, and then another, th another exciting thing that we were able to get involved with um, was starting to participate in the curriculum for the international scholars, which are um, uh, uh, attendings from around the world that um, get a scholarship to come to SIR, and there'll be several um, in Austin this year. And um, of course, as the International Outreach Committee for RFS, we wanted to be a part of that. And so we're continuing to um, integrate ourselves into uh, helping uh, create a good experience for them when they come over for um, for SIR this year. And finally, um, we kind of, this is on a, a, a broader SIR level. There was a formalization of a partnership between SIR and RADAID, which is, if you're not familiar, kind of like radiologists without borders. Um, and they are de uh, aggressively developing their IR branch to integrate into global health. Next slide. Uh, finally, just to kind of summarize our 2019 initiatives, um, since it is a young committee and um, international outreach can mean lots of different things, um, we sort of restructured for this year into three primary ways to outreach into the international community, professionally, educationally, and through direct service. So um, I'll just briefly go through these and how we envision them. Professional outreach is developing and sustaining relationships with international IR societies, similar to visiting um, CRC or other um, international meetings. As a part of this, um, we're developing a database of international meetings for uh, interested residents, fellows, and students to be able to go to. Um, we have a uh, kind of a list of RFS correlates within other international societies and contacts within those so that if we have a resident uh, or student fellow who's interested in attending one of these meetings, we can set them up with, um, you know, RFS, uh, whatever their correlate program leadership um, to sort of guide their experience. And we are creating a how-to guide for RFS representatives that um, go to these meetings to, to kind of explain what it is that we're doing here and, and further strengthen those relationships. Um, educational outreach is kind of in the vein of some of the work that we did last year, um, helping international medical graduates uh, understand our constantly changing tra change, uh, training model and how they can get involved with that. Um, 
some of the cool things we have are um, continued interviews and experiences with international medical graduates that are um, currently in programs in IR right now. Um, we, this is a, something that we are working on right now is developing an IR observership database. So for international students that want to come do an official observership within a program, um, we're developing a portal for them to be able to access that. And then we have country-specific interest groups as well. Um, our kind of uh, seed right now is in Mexico. So um, they're strengthening their relationship with RFS. And then finally, service outreach. Uh, this is really continuing to cultivate our RFS relationship with Rad Aid. Um, this is a really exciting time to be involved in global health if you're interested in interventional radiology because it is virtually non-existent in uh, resource limited settings. So um, there's a lot of opportunity to kind of invent ways to implement IR um, across the world and help um, capacity build for um, its implementation. So we're developing kind of a catalog of um, known interventional radiology trips for interested residents, fellow students that want to go on these, a portal for them to be able to onboard, and most importantly, maybe a list of funding resources for those interested um, who want to go because it's um, often not cheap and often self-funded. And so um, as a part of that, um, we want to make sure that we uh, do good representation of RFS members that do go on these trips. And so we'll hopefully feature some good testimonials from them on our website. So exciting year to be a part of this. Thanks for having us. And uh, thank you all. Thank you, Shantana. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm, I'm Alex Kutsenko, and I'm R2 resident at SUNY Upstate Syracuse, New York. I want to thank uh, our outgoing chair, John John Juan, uh, for an amazing productive work over the past year. He led us to numerous accomplishments and left the committee in a great shape. Uh, for the new members, I would like to introduce our committee. Uh, the focus of SIR advocacy is to influence public policy, laws, and budgets related to interventional radiology. We target all levels, including general population, hospital leadership, insurance carriers, and most importantly, government officials. We work together with SIR political action and government affairs committees. Uh, both of them advance interests of SIR members before the Congress. SIR advocacy and CIRPAC act as separate entities, but share the same goal to ensure that SIR has a voice on Capitol Hill. You may ask, for you as a physician, why is this important? Um, as we all know, interventional radiology is a new and rapidly evolving specialty. And it is especially important for us now to build strong teams and establish ground relationships with legislative bodies. Every day in Washington, D.C., decisions are made that influence IR reimbursement, scope of practice, medical malpractice laws, and patients' access to IR services. The federal government is the leading payer for physician services. All medical societies spend millions in campaign contributions each year. So if we want to generate long-lasting impact on the healthcare system and create IR-inclusive medicine, we must actively engage in political advocacy as well. Next slide, please. So every year, our community uh, gladly growing and gaining more political power. Uh, this uh, two year, last two-year cycle, we received record uh, amount of contributions, $137,000. That is almost $60,000 more than during the prior cycle. And uh, for the first time, we received more contributions than vascular surgery, mm -hmm. uh, which shares large amount of procedures and patient population with us. Hopefully, we can keep the momentum and continue to gain political weight in a multi-specialty healthcare system. So how does the advocacy work? SIM members donate to CIRPAC, and then in turn, uh, CIRPAC contributes to campaigns of political candidates. And in turn, they give us, um, this gives us access to Congress members and their staff where we can ask to sign on letters of support, introduce congressional testimony, or, uh, or sponsor future legislation. While CIRPAC helps with electing individuals to office, SIA advocacy efforts revolve around building relationships and educating government officials. 
by nature, a majority of lawmakers do not have an expertise in medicine or IR. Mm. And this is our responsibility uh, to introduce current policy issues and advise what we are trying to achieve. Unfortunately, staff turnover on Capitol Hill is high and the average staffer stays on Capitol Hill for approximately eight months. So this education must be repeated every year after year. Um, the driving engine for this education and increased IR awareness is grassroots leadership program. It was first established in 2014 and since then had a huge success and had uh, every year we had meetings. Uh, during the meetings, uh, IR faculty and trainees can weigh the value of IR uh, to political leaders. In 2018, we increased our efforts by organizing two grassroots programs, and we will try to continue this trend in the future. Uh, this year, we were supporting GME Bill HR 1167 that proposes redistribution of unused residency slots with priority for newly um, created primary specialties such as interventional radiology. In addition, SIA organized congressional briefing, increasing IA awareness and discussing what we as specialty have to offer in treatment of cancer and non-opioid pain management. Uh, during this year, we also uh, published several publications in GVIR and the um, and, uh, current uh, um, uh, uh, current, um, what is the name of the current problems of diagnostic radiology? Uh, we also presented at ICET and uh, we have a presentation at SIR. Next slide, please. So as New Year um, for SIR begins, we have multiple smaller projects, uh, but I will mention just a few bigger ones. Uh, we will continue to work with grass grassroots leadership program. In addition to previously described Jamie bill, uh, bill uh, the plan is to introduce new bill uh, for additional coverage for breakthrough technologies. If passed, this bill would expand um, the spectrum of reimbursement coverage and make FDA review process more transparent and efficient. Uh, SIA will also continue to work uh, with Congress to ensure SIA members will, uh, will be compliant with the new MIPS uh, regulations that also impact physician reimbursement. Uh, to support SIR's new political efforts, we as an advocacy committee, we will try to match and increase members' contributions. Uh, we are working on organizing uh, several webinars and increasing our visibility on social media, uh, including SIR Connect, Twitter, Facebook. We will try to uh, keep monthly quarterly updates uh, we will continue um, our presence at major conferences. Uh, we're working right now on a TED Talk, Believe in Better Medicine, and uh, we will continue on um, trying to provide more uh, publications. And um, lastly, we plan to create an IR political advocacy course uh, that later hopefully will be incorporated in a new IR training cur uh, curriculum. Uh, we have a great enthusiastic team working at SAI Advocacy Committee, and I'm confident that this will be a productive and fun year for all of us. Thank you, and join our committee. All right, so um, unfortunately, Jay could not make it to uh, today's meeting. He's on call, so I'll give a quick update. Um, obviously, I am not the expert on many of these topics, but I'll do my best based on my conversation with him. So uh, this is a, a relatively brand new committee. The Health Policy and Economics Committee is uh, relatively new. And um, obviously there's um, a couple new projects that they have started up right away. Uh, the big one being the Health Policy and Economics Resident Curriculum. So uh, Jake astutely noticed that that is something, this is something that a lot of residents do not have any exposure to. So in an effort to uh, fix that, he has created a, uh, a curriculum very similar to the critical care curriculum as well as the um, ITROC curriculum. And um, the goal is to educate residents on, um, on, on relevant topics that are important for um, uh, how health policy decisions are made um, and what is important for an early, uh, early career interventional radiologist uh, when it comes to the economics of uh, building a practice. Um, I will leave the other uh, updates for 
uh, that J this was the major project that Jake has been working on. I will, um, I'm not going to attempt to explain the other ones because uh, this was, this was uh, the major one that he wanted me to talk about. So with that, we'll keep on moving. Hey everybody, this is Dustin too. I'm the incoming chair for the IR residency training committee. I'd like to thank David Duncan for all of his efforts and all the accomplishments that he was made. Um, our committee is focused on keeping all residents and medical students up to date with everything regarding all of the changes in the IR training pathway. Um, and I think we have a lot of good projects going that we've completed this year and also that are working on this year that will be able to do that for all those involved with these changes. Next slide. Um, so all the things that uh, David and I were able to get completed last year, uh, they had a the program director outreach. This was published uh, in Academic Radiology, um, just determining how they integrate all of their medical students. Um, there, we worked on getting a presentation with the resident-run clinics and how all of the integrated residencies are incorporating the resident-run clinics into their programs. Um, it was presented at SIR and a letter to the editors pending. The same thing, the next two, we did internship questionnaires and intern experiences versus TY experiences, um, which you can see where those were presented and letters to the editor pending. Next slide. I think, uh, as I kind of was leading to earlier, uh, a lot of our major, with all the major changes um, going on within the uh, pathway for to become an uh, interventionalist, um, our focus this year is on really trying to, our main project there, we have two main projects and then cleaning up some others. The, the first main project is uh, working uh, hand in hand with SIR to determine what happened to those fellowship spots. Um, we have a couple of projects uh, underway right now so that when the match comes, we'll be able to put together all this information and get it all out to all of the residents and med students who are anticipating all of this information. Um, the SIR Universal Curriculum, um, the SIR hopes to roll this out in 2020. Um, it's going to be a educational curriculum that's incorporated into all of the residencies. Um, the RFS is going to work pretty much with most of these committees and then um, obviously closely with the SRR to develop this curriculum that will be part of the requirements for those in the integrated and in the ESR pathways. Um, the IR residency blocks was a project we're working is uh, IR residency develop and unfold and what changes happen. We're just trying to um, keep up to date with how programs are creating their rotation blocks and where they're placing their residents for what periods of time and working with their DR programs uh, to make sure that uh, this transition runs smoothly for both parties involved. Um, and then the other one, which we are, you know, special shout out to Eric Keller for getting all these things up and done, uh, but the IR rotation modules, which are, you know, fast hit uh, modules that uh, residents and students can look at. We've got five more of those that we want to get uploaded and then we'll be done with that project. And that is all that we have. Thank you. Hey everyone, my name is Audrey Magnaski. I'm the incoming chair of the Women in IR Committee, uh, currently a surgery intern at St. Joseph Hospital in Denver, and then starting IRDR residency here at the University of Colorado in a couple of months. And I am taking over from Jill Zhang, who is our outgoing chair from Columbia. So next slide. A couple of our projects from last year, we had a series of different webinars that focused on uh, both women in IR related topics as well as uh, patient, female patient type topics, including uterine fibroid embolization and breast cancer interventions, um, which were awesome to see. There was also a big focus on, um, you know, residency applications and medical student recruitment as we're trying to diversify the field of IR. And that leads us into our next project um, from last year that is actually a project that was submitted as an abstract and accepted to be presented at SIR this year, uh, which is called Looking Ahead to Move Ahead, Recruiting Female and Male Medical Students to Close the Gender Gap in Interventional Radiology, uh, which talks about a lot of the interests and goals and seeking out what medical students are looking for in a residency and how to, to better recruit um, a more diverse and inclusive field. And next slide. 
So our ongoing projects for this upcoming year, our first project is the Women in IR Wikipedia profile project that is just taking off. So we currently have six profiles that have been written and published on Wikipedia um, about uh, very influential women in IR and their achievements and contributions to the field of both interventional and diagnostic radiology. So this project has been submitted to the AMWA, which is the American Medical Women's Association, as a poster, and then we will be continuing to put up more profiles and try and drum up more interest in those to kind of get the word about out about some of the awesome uh, WIRs that we have in our field. Our other big project of the year is the Pregnancy Toolkit which is a series of resources and advice and stories from women currently in IR for women in IR thinking about going into IR to kind of help support um, women and their partners who are thinking about having children during residency or during their careers um, and how to navigate those challenges and have support and resources and can create a community for those folks. So that will be launching right around the time of the annual meeting this year. So we're very excited about that. Our last big uh, project for the year is the leadership webinar series that will be launching in April of this year. Uh, this will be a series of 10 webinars that are directed to trainees in early career IRs that will address topics specifically about how uh, that impact women in leadership roles, uh, but really about career planning and problem solving that will be useful for, for anyone at any stage of their career. So we are very excited about all of those. Thank you. Hey guys, uh, I'm Razine. I'm a PGY1 doing my surgery intern year right now. Uh, I'm going to be doing my radiology years at Mount Sinai and St. Louis West. Uh, me and Giovanni will be taking over the Research and Innovations Committee. Uh, Danya and John have done a, a fantastic job like founding and really leading this committee over the last year. And as everyone knows, IR is a, a field that attracts innovators. And it's like this culture of innovation that's like really like the development of minimally invasive techniques across basically every organ system. And uh, the purpose of this committee is to continue to like, foster this spirit of innovation in trainees and during their clinical leaders. Uh, and in this committee, we really hope to facilitate providing resources in various aspects in the research and innovations process. Uh, next slide, please. So we're we're we are a new committee. We we found we were started around like a year ago. Right now we have about 25 members, and we've had a pretty good like steady growth over like over the year. And we have a mix of um, all levels, including several active medical students. And all, although we're a smaller and like relatively new committee, we, we do have a lot of exciting projects going on. I guess uh, one of the biggest things I'm I'm proud of is that we have a really strong uh, collaboration with the medical school, medical student committees, especially the biodesign and the research committees. Uh, we're, we're working on uh, several projects together, including a hackathon, a uh, new website. Several of our members like serve as reviewers for the medical student research committee on their research projects. And I, I guess another big accomplishment we've had over the last year is the success of the Conversation with Giant series, which is a series of interviews ran by committee members with big name IR and attendings in which they discuss the attendings career, work life balances, inspiration for research, and general advice. We actually just had our uh, first interview with Dr. Sue Len from Penn published in Endovascular today. And uh, I guess moving forward we plan on trying to do like quarterly publications with EVT with um, pretty well known attendings. Uh, the next one for Q two is uh, all set with Dr. Salem from Northwestern. Uh, yeah, and it's actually got pretty good publicity on Twitter, and um, we look forward to continuing with this project. And over the last, last year, we've had um, several webinars, including the AI and IR talk webinar on grant writing, as well as uh, Journal Club on Imperial Trial. And uh, moving forward, we will try to aim to do quarterly webinars, especially with, with, with an emphasis on innovation as it appears this is a pretty hot topic, and we're going to continue to collaborate with the Biodesign MSC group to um, bring out a good uh, steady supply of webinars. And uh, another big accomplishment in our group is that uh, we had an article published in IR Quarterly in, where we discussed um, how investing in research education for trainees is essential 
whether through like the recruitment of residency applicants with strong research backgrounds or all that, even like formalizing the IR research training in, in IR residencies and fellowships. Um, we also discuss uh, opportunities for research and highlight um, several ways to advance the research training in IR. And it's a pretty big topic and there's uh, several efforts towards designing residencies that support training uh, residents of, in becoming clinician scientists. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so um, I guess the uh, big goals for the upcoming years to continue to work with the biodesign and research committees. We've had a, a lot of active projects and several in the making, so this year should be pretty busy and productive for us. Uh, firstly, we want to build off the success of the medical student hackathon this year. And for next year, we want, we want to have a large scale, almost like a Shark Tank style hackathon with a group of IR attendings as facilitators. Um, another shared product we have with the Biodesign MNC is a, an innovations webpage which we um, we do plan on uh, having as part of the RFS website. And this will sort of serve as a central source for all things innovation, where we like to have resources, um, information on biodesign, hackathon stuff, webinar transcripts, uh, and have an innovations timeline where we highlight the biggest innovations in IR from the 1950s. And uh, likely have, be a good source to continue to post new innovation webinars. And uh, We've already talked about ITROP, but uh, several of our committee members, including Danya, are going to be spearheading a big portion of ITROP, and we look forward to uh, continuing this really successful project. And uh, we're we're going to be leading a, a design thinking annual annual session. Uh, this year, the session is going to be run with Dr. Ryu and Dr. Weiss. It's going to be uh, this on on the Monday, so March 25th, from 1 to 2:30. Uh, the format of it is basically the first half of the session is going to be a didactic session um, where the attendees are going to talk about design, the, the, the format of design, th design thinking. And uh, the second half of it is going to be an interactive small group session where uh, groups use design thinking process to come up with innovative ways to address mm -hmm. clinical situations. And uh, lastly, um, we're going to try to create an innovations curriculum where we revamp uh, the webinar series and innovation and try to get high yield topics for trainees and identify resources and create modules using resources for each for each topic. And similar to the ITROP for in terms of the innovation portion of it. And we're gonna use the annual meeting design thinking event as a launching pad for this curriculum. And uh gonna continue to to work on the conversations with giants. Uh, yeah, and thanks uh, thanks a lot for listening, and uh, we have a lot of passion and people in this group, and we look forward to continuing to collaborate with everyone. Hi, guys. Uh, I'm Gaurav Gadodia. I am the incoming uh, co-chair for the recruitment committee. Uh, Bryce Bodell is the previous chair of the recruitment committee and is staying on as co-chair, uh, which is, I'm really excited about. So this year, we're uh, as I'll get to shortly, just we're both staying on to be coaches to try to and expand the role of recruitment and uh, as RFS and just SIR in general grows, uh, hope to be able to add some more value um, from in terms of recruiting people and kind of uh, helping making sure that uh, we're running on all cylinders. So definitely excited uh, to be here and excited to have uh, Bryce staying on and I think that's going to be a huge boon for us going forward. Uh, so we can go to the next slide. So just uh, in general, there are some different levels of recruitment or uh, membership within the SIR or within the RFS at least. Um, so they're just the general in-training members. Uh, these are the people that just kind of uh, apply and purchase or pay for the general SIR uh, RFS membership. And it does not necessarily say that they're active uh, within the RFS in any kind of way. Um, they're not necessarily volunteers or part of a committee. Um, to be one of those members, to be an active volunteer, there's a application, uh, which we'll get to in a, m a moment, and once they've applied, uh, we review that uh, as a recruitment committee, um, and we kind of evaluate where, what committee and what service lines uh, these people would be best for and help place them in those places a little, a little less specially. 
And lastly, there's a governing council, which is um, all the fantastic people that you've uh, heard from today, incoming and outgoing chairs. Uh, so this is a uh, really competitive uh, application. This is just one time a year, not rolling like in the active volunteer section. Um, and again, these are the, these are the people who end up being the chairs, and why we know we get uh, kind of the you know the crop across the board, which is really nice and uh, great to work with everybody. Um, these are the people that are kind of doing the overall committee efforts, as you've heard from all of them, um, and it really helps in terms of you know a lot of these people. You can already see we've only been around for not a terribly uh, long amount of time, and and the people who have been in the governing council in the past and helped late lead it. Um, have really gone on to do great things already in their in their so far young careers. Um, so next slide. So this is uh, just a link to go. It's a Google form for the application. Um, so really, everybody who applies to be an active volunteer member of the RFS, which you know is quite a few people, and it definitely spikes. Um, around SIR and definitely after SIR. So we're excited to kind of see that spike as we talk to people and they see what we're really doing from uh, medical students to residents and fellows. Um, and a lot of these people, you know, once they're kind of joined with us, they they stay on for a while and hopefully in the future become leaders and chairs and governing council as well. Um, we kind of look through their application. We have them, uh, there's some short answer essay type things, you know, why they're interested in IR and what they think about the future of IR. And it's it's funny because uh, you can ask 10 people and all of them will have really different responses. Um, so that's great because that helps us kind of uh, separate them that and uh, their own personal rankings of the different committees uh, helps us kind of place them into the appropriate place. And we also uh, work directly with all the chairs uh, of the other committees to make sure that, you know, we're fulfilling their membership needs, having enough active members uh, for them and maybe not uh, having too many members at, at the same time as, as that's becoming more of a problem these days with, with the amount of uh, interest that we have. Uh, next slide. Um, so our goals for the upcoming year, um, some of them are similar to this past year, but again, with uh, Bryce and I, we're trying to both staying on, we're trying to expand uh, the role just a little bit. Um, so we're going to kind of maintain being that point of contact for all prospective and current members. Um, I know when I was uh, looking to get back involved, even at SIR last year, I was talking to Bryce quite a bit, and, and that's, you know, what our role is to be that uh, intermediary between people who are just kind of looking at the RFS or maybe just general members um, who want to become active volunteers. We were the ones who talked to them about what, uh, you know, what that entails and, and what they could do here and how we could uh, place them in a place that could help them and us succeed. Uh, we're going to try to keep up with recruitment, um, but also uh, one thing that we're really going to harp on this year and strive to do this year is making sure that um, the people stay active uh, and they're actively participating uh, both so that we get you know good uh, input from them and, and good work from them for our committees but also that we're keeping them engaged and giving them things to do um, and making sure that they're not you know wasting their time and, and we're not wasting ours uh, there are many people that are, are really interested in, in helping us out um, so a few things we're also one thing that we're really moving for uh, talking to we talked to Dr. Vagan Cherry about this quite a bit too recently is is trying to make sure that these people who are even if they're not in the general council once you're part of the RFS and I volunteer, we want you to be a leader at your home institution um, in your program we want you to know that you're involved in the IRIG at your local community we want to know um, that you're participating um, in IR clinics and kind of you know, having a longitudinal, whether you're a longitudinal or integrated resident or not, or you maybe you're, you know, older than that, we still want to know that you're maybe getting involved um, in the day-to-day -day of IR, and maybe in the clinics, and even uh, helping to influence the curriculum either for themselves or even for future years to come. But we really want to make these people make sure that everybody in the RFS is a leader um, wherever they they are, um, as they've already shown to be. Uh, definitely going to hope for a strong presence of RFS at SIR 2019. I think we've already heard a lot about that. I think there's going to be um, a great uh, presence of there. And uh, again, we usually get a spike after these uh, meetings. So I think that our presence is only going to grow uh, each and every year as, as it has so far. Um, we are the ones who are also in charge of the annual me uh, election for the governing council that just happened a couple months ago. That's all the incoming chairs that you've heard from now, including myself. Um, and we'll be doing the same thing, you know, over the year, trying to hear from people, uh, chairs about members that are in their committees that are doing really well and to hear from those committee members if they're interested in, in pursuing a more of a leadership role in the future. And then, um, you know, help, uh, help to organize that election and getting the right people into the right places in the future. 
Um, and then from there, uh, one nice thing about recruitment that I think Bryce did a great job of last year, and then I'm hoping that I can help continue this year and the two of us can do is um, kind of be a little bit of a catch-all. Just uh, sometimes, you know, in recruitment, we can kind of help plug gaps in multiple different committees um, and see, you know, where people might need things or where we ourselves can kind of help since we don't necessarily have um, some ongoing longitudinal projects in, in the same sense that they do and kind of help in the leadership role um, since we have that, you know, contact point with all the residents that are in the RFS. So it's easy for us to kind of get back involved and talk to them and help out um, uh, where we can. Um, so next slide, I think with that, that is all for the recruitment committee. Um, I'll let uh, Shantanu continue. Hello, <clears throat> hello everybody. This is Rakesh Ahuja. I'm one of the R3s going to be an IR1 at Einstein Medical Center in Philadelphia. Me and Shantanu are currently the co-chairs for annual meeting committee this year and we'll be following up the next year as well. Next slide, please. So the basically the committee is, con uh, it, it consists of two people, which is a two-year commitment, which is two residents, always one senior, one junior. So there is overlap and continuity uh, in the following year, uh, the plan, the uh, the main work of this committee is basically to plan the whole curriculum and recruit speakers for the SIR RFS in training sessions at the annual meeting. Mm -hmm. And these, there are numerous events which are planned, which uh, includes uh, a lot of uh, uh, educational sessions as well as uh, trivia sessions and some fun social events in the evening as well including the resident in training uh, and medical in, medical student in training scholarship dinners and also planning the cook synergy dinner uh, which uh, is one of the most anticipated and attended event uh, the other job of the annual meeting committee is basically to screen applications for rit and mit scholarships every year which we had some uh, great turnout this year and we had some good number of applications and uh, uh, we chose the best ones out there. Uh, the other main job of the annual meeting committee is to work closely with the SIR and industry in organizing hands-on workshops, exhibit hall tours, uh, basically just to give idea to the trainees about getting them acclimatized to the uh, devices, the new innovations, basically. Next slide, please. Uh, the the purpose of this annual meeting committee is to identify the trends in IR and uh, also organize talks and sessions uh, which are related to these trends. Uh, this year we have a very good group of program directors from many different programs who will be talking about the current trends in IR, IR of trainee selection uh, and also will be answering many questions which trainees will have about the future of IR. Uh, the most one of the most important session that we uh, did a pilot program last year was uh, organized emergency uh, emergencies in IR suite. So the the idea behind the emergencies in IR suite is that you are going to learn uh, how to do a procedure regardless of whichever program you go. But it's really important to learn how to actually manage the patient when the patient is in a critical situation uh, in the angio suite itself. Uh, most programs have. Uh, some sort of uh, setup about the code blues and uh, uh, emergent situation, uh, emergent teams, but you should basically know how to manage the patient while these uh, the teams uh, come to the, the angio suite. Uh, the next session that we plan is the innovation in the IR, uh, IR world. Uh, we should give a shout out to Rajat and Dani Adai who have really planned it really nicely. Uh, they have a good session plan in which they will be highlighting some of the new innovations uh, happening currently in the IR world. Uh, the other job of uh, annual committee uh, is to bolster an IR training confidence on their IR rotations by organizing sessions which include research and grant writing seminars. And as I, as I touched upon it before about the exhibit hall tour, which includes uh, getting acclimatized to the devices which exist and which are uh, available for your use. Uh, we already talked about the RIT MIT dinner and the Cook Synergy dinner. Next slide, please. Uh, for this year, we had a slight spin on the annual meeting. Uh, 
traditionally we have had some kind of programming, but this year we included some, some more uh, like innovation used to be there. Now there's innovation plus, which will also include many other attendings from across the country from prominent programs who will be giving us idea about innovate thinking outside the box and how to push our specialty forward with new procedures and tools. Uh, new this year, uh, Dr. Hustle is going to organize the JVIR RFS writing workshop. Traditionally, this used to be uh, for heavy research people, attendings, but this year he really wanted to do it for RFS people as well. Uh, the one other session that we are uh, extremely proud about and we have received tremendous amount of uh, uh, participation is the RFS trivia session. We will be uh, putting in teams together. Uh, Dr. Raj Green and Josh Kuba will be uh, helping us organize this. And I'm pretty sure all of you know there's an amazing trophy waiting for someone to take home. Uh, next session, this is new this year, is because of such a lot of innovation happening in our field. Dr. Prologo will be talking about catheter directed stem cell delivery. I'm not going to talk talk more about it because I really want everyone to listen to it because it's so new and such an innovative idea. Uh, and we talked about the second annual session on managing emergencies in IR suite. We included some more attendings this year and some more trainees. So we are hoping we'll get a good turnout. Next slide, please. So overall, we have seen a big jump in the number of uh, signups in which of the residents and medical students which is the numbers are right here, which is 352 medical students and 392 residents just in 2019, and more are coming every day, uh, which is really good for our specialty because more the number of people are interested, more talent will come in and more innovation we can see in our field. Next slide, please. And that's it from me. See you all, everybody in Austin. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for all the updates and uh, for all the hard work. Um, I think the uh, I think the overall message that we're sending um, is is that we have we recognize that that there's a lot of work that needs to be done for trainees, and um, I think we have a pretty unified front uh, front in in tackling that. Uh, just a reminder that the RFS General Assembly will be on Sunday uh, of SIR at 1 p.m. So please tune in for that. Please show up for that. Um, that will be also the time when we kind of discuss the uh, overall um, plans for the upcoming year, how to get involved, uh, as well as uh, some of the social events happening at SIR uh, itself in that in that week. Um, and one final thing I'll note, um, Dr. Vatican Cherry, who is our who's been our mentor for a long time, um, every year he has one or two uh, one or two major topics that he wants to really push forth. Um, this year he really wants to kind of he wants to make sure that we figure out how to include longitudinal clinic um, in the IR residencies. I, it's been talked about for years, but I think we, have, we haven't we have really gotten it off the ground. So um, whoever's listening, all the attendees that are uh, tuning in, as well as the uh, RFS chairs, um, talk to your PDs, see if we can get this going. Um, by the end of the year, I hope we can get at least half a dozen, if not more, solid examples set and run. Um, to provide a good example for um, others. And um, it, it's gonna take some work, but let's make it happen. Thank you all very much, and I uh, hope to see you guys at SIR. Thanks. Thank you, have a good one.